So storm chaser Aaron Rigsby was in Rolling Fork of when the tornadoes touched down and witnessed the storm firsthand. He's here with us now to share more of what that was like. So this is what you do. Um, you follow these storms, but I mean, this sounds particularly devastating. And we've talked to some other people or, or other reports where people said they had like two minutes to figure out what to do. What did you witness in the way this tornado moved when it hit this area? Yeah, so I had actually been following this storm since north central Louisiana, and it took a long time for the storm to actually develop. It was very disorganized and weak for a very long time. And when I crossed into Mississippi and headed north, I positioned myself just southwest of Rolling Fork, Mississippi, where unfortunately that storm really started to rapidly organize. And it went from a small cone tornado when it first touched down and quickly grew into a quarter mile wide, very violent wedge tornado in just a matter of like two or three minutes. Thankfully, though, I was able to tweet out to the National Weather Service in Jackson to confirm that there was a large, extremely dangerous tornado on the ground heading toward that community right before the cell towers went down. And that's when the tornado emergency came out for the town of Rolling Fork, Mississippi. You know, I, I don't know anything much about tornadoes. Usually, you know, in the news, you were sort of there for the aftermath. You said that it really organized rather quickly into um, kind of the funnel cloud, I guess. You know, how quickly do these things move? I know they're massive. If you're standing watching it, I mean, how much time do you have before it gets close, close enough to you that it's too late? Well, this tornado in particular was moving very quickly. A lot of the times, tornadoes will move about 25 to 40 miles an hour. When this tornado touched down, it was moving at highway speeds. I mean, we're talking 65 miles an hour. That's as fast as cars move down the interstate. So you have sometimes people only have seconds to, to, to prepare for the storm. And within the matter of, you know, five minutes, maybe less, it was already knocking on this community's doorsteps. So they didn't have much time to prepare at all. And unfortunately, even when I was positioned outside of town, I don't believe that they even really had time to issue the tornado sirens. And when I got to town, when we were doing search and rescue, you know, when I was pulling people from the rubble, most of them only made it to their living rooms. They weren't even in shelters. They, wow. they barely had time to even get to cover into the central most portion of their house. So let me ask you about that, that uh, Aaron. You're the, you're the guy that's there. You're helping people now in the aftermath. What was, what was going through your mind as you're lifting up rubble, as you're hearing people sort of call out for help? It was very ominous. When I pulled up to town, it was hard to see the extent of the damage. And I have a bunch of lights on my car. And when I flipped those on, that's when I could see all the leveled homes in the heavily damaged communities. And there was just a constant cry for help in every single direction. So I quickly followed the nearest ones that I could. And that's when I discovered the, the first elderly woman that I came across. And she had only made it to her living room before her house blew down and she got trapped under a bunch of debris. Uh, with her walker. So when I got into her house, I was able to pull a bunch of that debris off of her and free her, but she had an ankle injury that I was unable to assist with. So I went and got emergency crews when they arrived and they were able to get her on a stretcher and out of her house. But until then, you know, I was just comforting her. I got her some blankets that were in a nearby room to keep her warm before I moved on to the next home. And the next home, it was unbelievably lucky. This woman, she got trapped in her living room, her entire house collapsed on top of her and the only thing that prevented that debris from falling on top of her and seriously injuring her further was her couch everything was propped up against her couch just enough to where she did not sustain any serious injuries and some good samaritans let us use their chainsaw and we actually had to cut our way into her home to remove a bunch of that debris and free her and then after that i also helped uh, a little girl and her family I carried her down from the rubble and just reassured her that the tornado was gone and everything was safe now. While well, her parents came down and we got them to shelter as well. Wow, absolutely remarkable. Uh, Aaron, listen, I know you're going to continue your storm chasing. I want you to stay safe, all right? Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you.